My name's Jeremy Gilly. In July 1998, I decided to make a film about peace. I was going to try to establish the first ever peace day, a day of ceasefire and non-violence, a day for everyone to become involved in the peace process. I'm dyslexic. My only qualification is a D in pottery. But that wasn't going to stop me. You see, if I failed, the film could make a profound statement about a world unwilling to change. If I succeeded, well, that was almost inconceivable. What was the first thing we were going to do? Make peace for one day. Make peace for one day. Does anybody think that's possible? Who thinks it's not possible? I launched the Peace One Day project at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. The UN showed their support by sending a representative. I put it to you today that it is the peoples of this planet who can create peace. There has never been a day in the history of humankind where the global community hasn't killed each other. I invited two and a half thousand people to the launch, mostly press. 114 people turned up mostly friends. It was completely ignored by the media. So was it such a good idea? Would it make a difference to people's lives? I had to ask. My film camera would document the journey. Il arrive que cette journée soit acceptée. Est-ce que vous ne voyez que... Parce qu'on remarque aussi des, des journées comme la journée de l'enfant africain, par exemple, qui ne, ne, ne change rien sur la situation de l'enfant africain. Est-ce que vous ne voyez pas que cette journée sera comme d'autres journées qui n'ont rien en apport, qui n'ont rien de positif My experience um, of conflict is that those who are involved in it, and unfortunately in my work, I see a great deal of this, long for even a day of peace. That's what they say to me. If this would only stop for a day, it has the practical uh, impact of allowing relief from the pressure and tension of not knowing where the next bomb or bullet may come from. If there is a cessation for a day, then it gives us an opportunity to move supplies safely through places that are otherwise difficult. Crucial was meeting Secretary General Kofi Annan. With his support, governments would surely take the idea more seriously. But would he take me seriously? The ponytail had to go. Any moment, whether it's a day or a week, that we can give the combatants to pause, to think, and reflect on what they are doing to their own people and to their environment will be a great achievement. And I will support it 100%. How did I pay for it all? It was a constant struggle. The cash I needed came from individual donations and friends volunteered to help. My mum gave me her spare bedroom to use as a production office. My dad helped me account for every penny I spent. After hundreds of meetings and thousands of letters, it could now be voted upon by the leaders of our world. My suggested date was the 21st of September. It was my granddad's favorite number. He'd been a prisoner of war. He saw the bomb go off at Nagasaki. It poisoned his blood. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start. Mr. President, the United Kingdom and Costa Rican governments have now joined together to strengthen to and reinvigorate what was originally brought to our attention by a UK-based organization, Peace One Day. The UN International Day of Peace be observed as a global ceasefire Just day. Suggests that this day be fixed as the 21st of September. May I take it that the Assembly decides to adopt that resolution? It is so decided. <laughs> mm. 
the, um, you know those things that you have in court that you whack? They you whack one of them. Four days later, Secretary General Kofi Annan was going to announce to the world's press the formation of Peace Day. It was the morning of September the 11th, 2001. And it looks as if uh, two planes have hit the World Trade Center and uh, Kofi Annan is just about to ring the peace bell. And uh, it could well have been a terrorist attack, you know, in New York. Uh, we have been asked to postpone this event. Uh, my understanding is we should all move out of here. This area right now, you can this Oh man, it's just total mayhem. This is incredibly frightening. Will you ring my mum just tell her I'm fine? They've evacuated the United Nations. Peace days came and went with no ceasefires or humanitarian action. It was so frustrating. I honestly thought it was going to work. I thought governments would get behind the day they voted for. Individuals that heard about the day observed it, and that was beautiful. But the cynics always seem to be louder. You'll never stop the fighting. It's pointless. The day will never work. The only way to silence the cynics was to silence the guns and show people observing the day in areas of conflict. I had to continue. The day needed more attention. Sean Pertwee, who I'd met at the Royal Shakespeare Company, had introduced me to Johnny Lee Miller. We've got to do something, Johnny, that is going to make every single government in the world, you know, stand up and get involved in it. What is it that is going to twist this? Hello. Hello. Hey. Very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Come in, come in, come in. We've got a camera on. Do you want me to turn it yeah, on? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Hello. 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 I mean, I, honestly, I, I've I've just come in to to, um, to really hear how how I can how I can help. Yeah. Um, this was unbelievable. Um, Angelina Jolie yeah. was sat on my sofa asking me what she could do. I couldn't stop talking. I was so nervous. If she was willing to use her celebrity status to bring awareness to the day, that would surely create public attention. I think what is it that we can do is to hold an event. If we do it on the evening of the 20th, it would be in the press on the day of peace. Yeah. Does that make Beautiful. sense? Yeah, yeah. But I think that what that could be on the 20th of September is a call to action. Yeah, it's a call to action for journalists as well, and, you know. You could to, to, to challenge of taking up the, when the, all the times that they failed you before. You shouldn't have to have any kind of celebrity when you're talking about something as important as this. But if that, but that's what they often wait for. The world's most glamorous movie star came dressed to kill. Her mission to honor World Peace Day. You know, I travel the world, as you saw, hearing people talk about all of the practical activities we've created this day, and now we need to see them occur. And filming will not stop until that becomes a reality. And it's very interesting, this type of filmmaking, how it's going to turn, good or bad. I think it's amazing. And I also love that he's going to stand the course, waiting for the ceasefire to probably show itself. <laughs> Ambassadors, messengers of peace, dear friends, peace is a paramount mission of the United Nations. 21st of September, the International Day of Peace, is the day on which... Seeing the value of celebrity was a real eye-opener. Standing beside Michael Douglas, I could see the UN had figured that out years ago. Momentum was building. It is meant to be a day of global ceasefire, when all countries and all peoples stop hostilities for the entire day. I think it will become more and more effective. What do you think? To come to 100%, you need a lot of time. Yes, yes. And maybe our generation won't be there living when it comes to 100%. Maybe yes. we won't see that. Yes. This is my suggestion. When you go around the world and 
like find a group of people who like who do what you do, but in their country, yeah. and go to another country and do the same thing. So it'll yeah. make your thing more powerful. Yeah. How old are you? Sixteen. So you're about to leave school soon. Yeah. Would you do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if anything's achievable until, until you actually try it. But looking at, at how to make this work, of course, the key thing is to actually produce results where there is conflict, to actually have a ceasefire that holds. I think the next step for us, really, Susan, is to talk to the other departments concerned. If you were about to pull this off, then. My goodness me, I'll be anywhere at any point to document anything that happens yes. anywhere in the we world. We need to look at all our operations and see if there's any, any, any operation that is ripe for a, a peace agreement or, and, and get him in, in early. My sense is that timing a, uh, an agreement for a day is going to be very difficult. How old, how old is the young, young man? He is 16 years old now. When did he start uh, fighting? 96. Yeah, in 1996 he started to fight. When he was 12 years old? Yeah. What does he think about fighting now he's been here? Okay. okay, has he has he ever killed anyone? Uh, will he properly intimidate her? At last, a breakthrough. I got a call from Ahmed Fauzi at the UN. He'd spoken to UNICEF. A woman called Roshan Khadivi wanted to meet. They had a potential idea for Peace Day in Afghanistan. An idea that came to my mind was uh, polio vaccination. Um, it is really crucial for us to eradicate polio in Afghanistan. No one can guarantee that if the vaccinators go into an area, they're going to be protected. But the kids are really suffering. So we thought if we make a plan, to target two or three villages that have not been accessible for the past two years. So you're, you're saying on the 21st of September, we want a ceasefire in this area of Afghanistan so we can immunize children. Actually, I wanted you to come and see the place first, possibly coming in June or July to Afghanistan so we can plan it and see how we can make this happen. Afghanistan. It's amazing. This was the one place people would say to me, ceasefire, forget it. You think you can get the Taliban to stop? But here was a woman, sat on my mum's sofa, telling me they were going to try and mark Peace Day in the most volatile place on earth. Hmm. Yeah. So it, it sort of Great film. yeah, it tells the story in a real fast, condensed little way. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, we're just seeing. It's a great film, film Jeremy. Oh, cool, man. Even that is like, just gets it, doesn't it? <sighs> hmm. 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 So what can I do? Okay. Well, it's great that you came here, man. Well, I'm, I'm really, very, very happy to be here. Then I'd love to have a statement from you. Thanks for visiting the website. You know, make your commitment. OK, run for, go for Super 16. <laughs> one, Peace Day, the 21st of September. There will be activity Lovely. all over Thank the world. So find out more one. on the Peace website, peaceoneday.org. Last time, Jude. Nice to study. Here we go. What will you do to make peace on the 21st of September? Many thanks. We nailed it, man. Great. That is very good. Keep it running. Can I take a picture with you and yeah, me? Yeah. yeah. Where next? Where are you going next? I'm going to Afghanistan next. Oh, Afghanistan is when? July? Huh? July. What's that? Afghanistan. Yeah, Afghanistan, yeah. That's astonishing. I mean, how did you even start? Yeah. You come with me if you want. In July? I'm not doing anything in July. <laughs> well, you just come. How long will you go for? Uh, about eight days. Which eight days? Uh, about July 20th, July, July 28th. Serious. I'm serious. You want to come, man? Come. I mean, you know, it's it's and it's relatively safe. Well, let me go and have a look. See what I'm doing. I mean, it's, that's a sort of life-changing experience. Really. Yeah. I come from a beautiful land, yet poverty, conflict, and destruction have veiled the beauty from our eyes. I listen to the mountains, aching for the peace to return. I watch the rivers, 
attempting to wash away all the loneliness and suffering along with its rhythmical current. I taste the crispy air of high altitude, encouraging bliss to restore its place in my heart. I look with eyes which look beyond the anguish. This is my land. This is where my heritage was born and will die, a place known to the world as Afghanistan. As they say, welcome to Afghanistan. They say the situation in Afghanistan is tense and volatile. That's an understatement. Unfortunately, in some places, we cannot go without armed police escorts. In other areas, we go with armoured vehicles. Other areas, we can go quite safely without. No road movement uh, after uh, last light and before first light. This is how we operate. This is how the people live. We'd very much like to, to uh, you know, ask to have a cessation of hostilities for the duration of the day so that the, the children whose lives are deeply affected could be supported and helped. We would love to support this initiative. But the other side is not your classical uh, military opponent. It's one who worked with suicide bombs, roadside bombs. We are in a country that hasn't seen peace for 30 years. She says in one sentence, it's so her father. Does she want to tell me about that? Kisa kai chowa le tsenga mushkalate. Aga, aga tangu alok bimati. It's been ten it's yes, ten years. You know, ten years is a long time where I've just wanted to see that day really, really work. I don't want the skeptics to be able to say it's never gonna happen. It's never nobody can really ever stop. You know what I mean? That we as individuals, when we know that peace exists and there's a call for non-violence and ceasefire to every human being, and you know that that day exists, and then you don't do anything on that day at all. I have to face the reality that actually I think we'll destroy ourselves. Kind of sad to me, man. Mm. And it sounds to me a bit. And all this stuff. What is it that's sticking? I don't know, Jude. I don't know what the answer is, but no. if I if I had to say something right now, I'd say it's people's belief. The more I go on this journey, and the more I see and the more I listen, the more I worry that we don't believe it's possible. I want to know that human beings can change the situation and uh, whatever we get out of this, we will get enough to show that there is movement, there is momentum in the right direction, and that is positive and that is hopeful. What is the best way of getting the message across to the people of Afghanistan? If you could uh, be getting messages fed into the communities, you'd, you know, it would uh, multiply uh, your chances of, of success on this day, I think, immeasurably. <laughs> You're talking about um, organizing immunization in insecure areas, areas where people associated with the government 
do not uh, do not venture at mm. present because mm. of fear of their lives. But is there something we can do? Somebody we can talk to to say, look, there's children in this area. We know for a fact that they are suffering due to the fact that we are unable to give them humanitarian assistance. There are formal approaches to doing things in Afghanistan and that there are Afghan approaches to doing things. It's on very complicated networks of mutual obligation and self-help and respect for each other. When you engage so the, the potency of Afghan networks, of these informal, informal obligations, things happen. Yeah. the last seven days um, yeah. meeting with as many people from as many angles yes. present in Afghanistan yes. to yes. pass this word on so that it filters through to the necessary channels. Yes, uh, it's obviously a very important initiative. What are you therefore willing to do? To talk very seriously uh, to the people who are involved on our side of this uh, conflict about uh, creating a day of peace. Are you, are, you, are you saying that there is a willingness to try to do whatever it is you can, though? Yes, definitely, yes. We will get publicity for it, we will make publicity, but publicity is not all. If there's no substance behind it, you, you, needn't, uh, you needn't better have no, no publicity. And I appreciate your support. Uh, you as special envoy for the UN, hmm. uh, which is always <laughs> great. one day. For peace one Don't day. you steal my envoys. <laughs> Come on. For peace one day. I was going to say, I think I was going to go for the run. Fly me. <laughs> Do you think there's a way we that are, communities... We are the neutral group. Yes, of we course. We are the absolutely neutral group who has who live in those areas. Right. And live in the same village with them. We have presence in every single province, in 34 provinces. We're going to observe the Day of Peace mm -hmm. and that we're going to implement an activity is, yeah. that that affects and saves people's lives. Does that seem like too big a vision? 21 years I was spokesperson for the resistance. Does for me, nothing is big. Nothing is big. No. I mean, when I was fighting against the Soviet Union, people used to say that, am I, am, am, are you crazy? Now I'm here sitting in my country and the Soviet Union doesn't exist. I exist, but the Soviet Union doesn't exist. So, <laughs> if that was not big, this could, how could that be big? Yeah. Yes, sir. Salam alaikum. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The United Nations, in cooperation with Peace One Day, uh, is today launching a two-month campaign uh, aimed at achieving, on Peace Day, September 21st, a day of real peace in Afghanistan. And so to anyone and everyone listening or watching, and to all of you here, please make your commitment to the day, to because each action. and every one of us... So that what happens in Afghanistan inspires the world, gives them hope that if it can happen here, it can happen everywhere else. Jude coming with me had made all the difference. Media interest was growing. We left the film crew in Afghanistan and headed back to London. If all the plans from around the world came together, I wanted to make sure people would hear about them. A televised concert might be the perfect platform. So I contacted Annie Lennox. Thanks for doing this. Yes, of course I'm on board with you because uh, I believe in this very much. Let's see where we go from here then. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, can you tell us a little bit about this Helmand area? Obviously, it's, it's a very high-risk area. Uh, it's been the scene of most of the, or a very high percentage of the fighting between the international forces and the mm -hmm. Taliban for the last uh, 18 months. We're getting support from a lot of the role players, yes. including this, this negotiation which WHO has managed to mm -hmm. take off yes. with the tribal leadership on the yes. ground.
دیمیم لای مامانو مشکل کمی مشکلان سکداده چی دا واکسن کو مقدار پی پوکی چی دا واکسن وکی واکسن زرایش ندی اون داده است که از ما یاد نیست کلاس من از دکه گذاشتم کاره سی ماشون بروش می آویای من Jeremy Gilley, a lot of people listening, I dare say, will say, well, it's terribly easy to stand up on International Peace Day and say, wouldn't it be nice if there was peace and uh, everybody feels a bit better? Still, we have security problems, we have many problems. But with all of these problems, we are trying our best to reach all the children. It's quite hard for people to get their heads around whether this means anything, because peace in the playground, peace in the street, it could sound a bit nebulous. It's a big idealistic vision. You have decided to put your life in line, we are humbled by your commitment. The only problem is the bit about the guns falling silent. That, that's the bit that you haven't managed yet. Seven weeks ago, UNAMA and UNICEF launched an appeal together with an organization called Peace One Day. Show that you want peace in Afghanistan. Do something, big or small. Help us make peace in Afghanistan real. So a letter has been received by uh, WHO, the uh, World Health Organization. It's from the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan Taliban movement. All Mohajuddin of the Islamic Emirates are directed to provide support to UNICEF local vaccinators. This is to save the next generation of the country from this dreadful disease. Well, it's signed by the head of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan Taliban movement. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. there have been 82 separate Peace Day initiatives by over 30 UN agencies, government departments, radio stations and civil society organisations, many of which are life-saving activities. These include a weapons handover in Saigon, which is being declared a peace district, announcements for peace in mosques all over the country, immunisation campaigns in the southern areas of the country by UNICEF, the World Health Organization, MOPH, the Governor's Office, and Peace Day activities in schools throughout Kabul, organized by UNICEF with the support of the Minister of Education. So you see, the day is working. We launched the project at the Globe Theater here in London. In 1999, there were 114 people. They were all Jeremy's friends. And look where we are today. Over a hundred million people in over a hundred countries are marking the day today in many different ways. The World Food Program carried out a food drop in southern Sudan on peace day. 60 tons were delivered successfully. In DRC Congo, UNICEF and other organizations handed out insecticide-treated mosquito nets to protect 600,000 children, as well as vitamin A, deworming, and measles immunizations. Star Syringe provided safe immunizations in 20 locations, from Uganda to India, from Ethiopia to Indonesia, and vaccinated over 5,000 children. The International Rescue Committee in Congo reunited a family torn apart by war. This young woman was forced to fight for rebels. The IRC found her and brought her home. Ecova funded a Peace One Day education pack 
free for secondary schools in the UK. Puma announced a sports programme, One Day, One Goal, where football matches would be played all over the world on the day. And the Peace One Day team manifested commitments in all 192 countries of the UN. Tonight is about dedicating ourselves to working toward the day when peace will prevail on Earth. Let the revolution begin. This is a step forward in international relations. What will you do to make peace on September 21st? Whatever pledge you made for peace on this day, take it forward. Make it a pledge for all your days. Wouldn't it be fantastic if in the middle of a war, there was an end to polio. The, the day works, you know, it saves people's lives and it inspires young people to be the driving force behind the vision of a united and sustainable world. And by working together, you know, we can create peace one day.